and sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. But I want to emphasize this. Basically, we must have your reputation, brothers and sisters, that we are men and women of peace. We don't seek to fight with anybody. We will not fight with auto rickshaw drivers. If they... I mean, I'm not saying you should pay them more than what is deserved, but don't get into a fight or with porters in the railway stations. You see all the arguments or somebody who collides with us on the road. We're not going to go for a fight. There's a more peaceful way of doing all these things. We pursue peace and holiness without which nobody will see the Lord. I mean, my great passion is to see Jesus one day. And it says here, if you want to see Jesus, you better pursue peace with all men and sanctification. If somebody doesn't forgive you, that's his business. But you make sure your heart is open to him. And again, let me emphasize, it does not mean that you have to visit them. It does not mean that you have to go and have fellowship with them because forgiveness is different from fellowship. Jesus forgave everybody. He had fellowship with very few. Jesus had fellowship with very few people on the earth but he forgave everybody on the face of the earth. So that's my attitude. I also have fellowship with very few people, really, those who are wholehearted disciples of Jesus. But forgiveness, I've forgiven everybody. To the best of my knowledge, I can stand before God and say my conscience is clear. I have nothing in my heart. I do not wish any evil to anyone who's ever done me any type of harm in all my life. My conscience, I'll keep it clear till Jesus comes. Not because I want to see the Lord, because it's the right thing to do. Supposing it was written, well, even if you don't have peace with all men, you'll still see the Lord. I say, I still want to have peace with all men. I'm not doing it because I want to see the Lord. I'm doing it because that is the nature of God. He has put inside me to forgive people. And I'll tell you this, I don't forgive people so that God will forgive me. No, no, no. I want to forgive God. I want God to forgive me because I'm such a wretched sinner. I've grieved the Lord so much in my life. And because Jesus shed his blood for me, I ask the Lord to forgive me. It's got nothing to do with forgiving others. That is a separate thing. I will forgive others. But it is a condition. The Lord has said, if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. So this is very important. And then in this connection, it says, verse 15, make sure that no one comes short of the grace of God. There are many Christians who say this is not for believers. Foolish deceivers. Deceivers. Who say this is not for believers. And who is it for? Holy brethren. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, he says, don't come short of the grace of God. Can you, can a believer come short of the grace of God? Yes. Otherwise, what is the need of such an exhortation? See that no root of bitterness spring up. Can a root of bitterness come up in your heart? You tell me. You tell me from your past experience. Hasn't bitterness come up in your heart even after being born again? Against different people? Can you say it never came? Who can say it never came? And make sure when you get rid of that bitterness which you had some time ago against somebody, Maybe your mother-in-law or neighbor or your family member who cheated you of the property or somebody who did some evil to you or somebody who took you to court or something like that. When you've got rid of the bitterness, you say, okay, I forgive him. Make sure it says here there's no root of it still lying there inside your heart. Ask God to show you if there's a root. I remember, I asked the Lord to show me once and I found there was a root. I had forgiven somebody. I had completely forgiven someone. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I have forgiven. But one day when I heard that something bad happened to him, I was happy. I really was happy. I said, ah, oh, God is judging him. And the Lord said, you did not forgive him from your heart. I said, thank you, Lord. I forgive him from my heart. Your dealing with him is a separate matter. I'm not God. 
God's judgment is another thing. God resists the proud and he'll resist the proud when they are on earth. He'll resist the proud in eternity also. But my business is to forgive and forgive from the heart. And so now I've discovered that whenever I forgive someone, I must also sincerely be able to say, Lord, I wish good for that person. I really want good to happen to that person. I don't wish any evil for that person. You've heard me say that before. I know. But has it worked in your life? You say, oh, Brother Zag, I've heard that before. I know. You'll hear it from me again a hundred times till you come to, the life, come to that life where it will never come up in your heart wishing evil for another person, but that you'll wish good. Did you learn multiplication and division just with one lesson your teacher taught you? No. Did you understand calculus with one lesson? We don't understand anything with one lesson. So we need to hear it again and again. Don't come short of the grace of God. That no bitterness spring up there. You're forgiven outside. The root is still there. And that will cause a lot of trouble to you. And one day you will mention something to someone and others are defiled. And you mention something to another person. It says like that many are defiled. I pray that we will not have brothers and sisters like that in CFC who defile others with some root of bitterness that has not been pulled out and thrown away. What sort of forgiveness do you want God to give you? Do you want him to say to you, I will not remember your sins and iniquities? Say that to, about other people also. Lord, I don't have control over my memory. There are a lot of things stored in my memory. I can't take it out. So you will naturally remember in that sense things that uh, happened. Uh, God also remembers your sin and mine. But when he says, I will not remember, it doesn't mean he has forgotten. There's a lot of difference between saying, I have forgotten all your sins. God doesn't say that. Hebrews 8.12 says, I will not remember. Read the Bible exactly. God does not say, I have forgotten your sins. He has not forgotten. Because Jesus told a story of a king who forgave a slave. And the slave went out and didn't forgive somebody else. The king called the slave back and says, I have not forgotten what you owe me paid back. He unforgave the forgiveness he gave. He cancelled it. God can cancel a forgiveness. How does he do that? Because he remembers the sin. But Hebrews 8.12 says, I will not remember, which means I choose not to remember your sins. It's a choice God makes. And that's all I have to do. If you ask me, I do remember the evil things that other people have done to me. But I choose not to remember when it comes up to me. I say, I'm not going to remember it. I'm not going to remember. I choose, I exercise my will. As I've, you've heard me often say, I live in my will. I don't live in my mind or my emotions. My emotions can fool me. My mind also I cannot control. But my will, I choose to forgive. I choose not to remember. When it comes to my mind, I say, no, I don't want to remember that. It may come to my mind a hundred times in the next few years. I choose not to remember. After some time, it'll slowly stop coming, but it may come once in a while. I choose not to remember. <clears throat> so that way I ensure there's no root of bitterness in our heart. Very, very important. Because you can defile many people. You defile yourself and you defile a lot of others. One of the first people you'll defile is your husband or your wife. With that root of bitterness against somebody, family member or whatever it is. Be very careful, my brothers. See how that sentence begins. Don't come short of the grace of God by a root of bitterness remaining in your heart.